it was a crazy week, you know, especially for the left. We got some uh, incredible electoral victories. Corey yeah. Bush. Corey Bush. Uh, Repping Missouri first, well. Yeah, one of our first uh, podcast guests on the Vanguard podcast. We Shout were out to Corey Bush, yeah. one of my all-time faves. Um, and, yeah, it just seems like, uh, you know, lately it's, it's, it's easy to think that, you know, electoral politics is totally bullshit and there's no, there's no way out uh, electorally and then we got to just revolution this shit. But, uh, you know, I think that there's something to be said for those two concepts working in tandem. And, and I think we've really been seeing the results of that, you know. Uh, the, the action on the street, you know, first, I, I think it really led to the election of Jamal Bowman and, and almost Charles Booker. I mean, arguably it did if there weren't for some shadiness and last minute weirdness. Uh, and now I think it's definitely um, led to the election of Cory Bush in St. Louis over the political dynasty of the Lacey Clay's 50 year uh, political dynasty occupying that seat. Uh, so now that's no longer the case. Cory Bush, Black Lives Matter activist now um, will be taking that uh, seat in Congress come November. And also, just the other night in Tennessee, uh, Marquita Bradshaw. Bradshaw. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard about her a lot? I, I wasn't really aware of her until she won. I, I'm I hadn't her. heard about her until uh, the election night when I think when she kind of like really blew up nationally. I was amazed to find out that she only spent eight thousand dollars on her campaign. Holy shit! The tides are turning. This is—I mean, you know what I mean. People want working class voices. They want, you know, uh, black female voices to represent them because they're looking around and seeing that the people who are in office they don't see the world like they see them. They need people like Cory Bush, who's going to get on the mic after uh, winning the Democratic seat, which is basically winning the election in that district because it's so heavily blue, so reliably blue. And she says, "We need two dollars a month." everybody retroactively and we need to not cut stimulus or we need to not cut um you know entitlements and and public services to get it we need to we need to put more money into those things do you think when she said that she was kind of like low-key taking a shot at the squad who a did not endorse her and b has not been you know pursuing those yeah 100 percent, dude it's such bullshit that aoc stayed out of that race i mean i i mean whatever oh he was gonna get behind the green new deal in exchange for her like staying silent behind the green new deal (laughs) yeah exactly like what the fuck it's so it's so that's the biggest problem that i have with aoc somebody who can like oh cory bush is a personal friend it's like clearly not you know like i'm sorry but like if if, you know somebody that i personally believe and know is going to represent their constituents against a man that i know is just a dynasty figure uh a dino a democrat in name only um why i mean it's baffling to me it's unbelievable and it and and it's it's honestly it's it's extremely disappointing because it's the exact opposite of the rhetoric that aoc is always pushing and and i'll i'll give aoc credit where she's do it you know she's obviously a tremendously popular and powerful voice for the left um but I, i i think that she's a little more concerned about her career and her power in washington personally than she is about the power in washington for the left and i think that she feels like she's constantly being attacked and so she's constantly on the defensive and she's not taking as much time to be offensive now but i think that if anything her primary uh, illustrates that she can be much more aggressive she was comfortable everybody was like oh aoc you know just like everybody said oh rashida talib you know she barely won last time well look at she won by an even a way fatter margin this time aoc crushed her primary opponent as did uh, rashida talib so i think that what this all gets to is that You know, progressive and searching candidates are going to be way harder to get rid of once they're in office than people realize. Because guess what? It's fucking popular. And even when you viciously attack AOC 24 hours a day saying, oh, my gosh, she wants socialism. She wants to give everybody money. Oh, my God. She wants to give everybody health care. And people look around and it's like, it's a pandemic and everybody's broke. This sounds like a good idea. You know, how come we can give a bunch of money to corporations so that Amazon can buy up the rest of my fucking town? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And and it seems like it's now, I mean, with AOC, even with Jamal Bowman, you know, New York City, it's, you know, you can easily write it off as, oh, they're just leftists voting there, D- DSA, whatever. Missouri, you can't really say that, especially when it's a 50-year political dynasty. Tennessee? Tennessee. Is, sure. Admittedly, that was an open Senate race, but still. Yeah, sure. But I think Cori Bush's race is just so important because, yeah, she's she wasn't just taking down some, you know, milk toast white dude necessarily she was taking down a member of the congressional black caucus who was a, a longtime fixture of the congress this was not like someone who was necessarily mirrored in scandal you know elliot engel we remember had a few pretty 
horrendous scandals saying he didn't even want to be speaking at the Black Lives Matter if it weren't for his primary, stuff like that. Uh, you know, Lacey Clay's actually been taking this race seriously. He's actually been, you know, trying to beat Cory Bush. But Cory still, you know, won with the within and he was viciously smearing her yeah. coming after her finances because she got fucking COVID 19 just disgusting smears but it kind of it, it, i mean it, it kind of worked against him because when people see oh my gosh like this woman is like me you know like she's worried about her bills she knows what it's like to have to make these tough calls she's gonna know what it's like to feel how i'm feeling right now because she is feeling this right now when she gets to washington and she's gonna say hey your half measures is bullshit we're not taking it yeah Hundred percent, dude. And, I'm uh, so excited to watch. I, I'm so excited for Corey Bush. This is probably the race. It, it, and obviously, like you know, she does have to get through the the general election. Oh, she's like, definitely going to get through the general. Election. I understand. Yeah, but I, just the caveat because yeah. you know, like, oh, she hasn't won the race yet. But I, mean, I, I just mean it's going to be the chances of her dying are higher than of her losing that primary. So you know, <laughs> I mean, she's going to get into Congress and it's going to be legendary. And and I will say one thing: it's it's we've also like to you know kind of poo-poo on Bernard Sanders lately, but he is the sole member of the United States Senate or Congress to endorse Curry Bush. And I do think that is, a, you know, important uh, symbol there. I think that Bernie was uh, extremely proud of Corey. And I think that, honestly, uh, you know, he's kind of realizing that, you know, the, his political revolution actually is living on regardless of whether or not he's uh, pushing for it anymore. But, I mean, at least he is backing Corey Bush when other people aren't. At least he is getting out there to, you know, throw his hat in the ring every once in a while. Um, yeah, I think that it kind of is the spirit of what Bernie was trying to leave behind. Yeah. He's an almost a, you know eighty year old man, right? Like this dude's in this dude's old, and he's he's fought his fight, and he's done a damn good job of it. And he's really, and I mean, in his twenty sixteen run was historic. It pushed the country and and showed them what we could really have in a, in a way that no other politician had ever dared to do before for and it caught on like wildfire and he gave this message of grassroots fuck corporations we can do this ourselves our democracy is formed by the people let's be those people let's represent ourselves let's do this and i think that that message inspired so many people uh like cory bush like marquita bradshaw um you know like so many of the you know candidates that we've had on our show who have uh, said, you know, I was inspired by Bernie Sanders. I was like, holy shit, nobody's doing this where I live. I have to be the person that steps up and does it. And you know what? It's, you know, I hate to make a comparison to like the antithesis of something, but he's like the antithesis of Barry Goldwater, right? Like he's like the Barry Goldwater of the left. Like he never got his shit together to win a race, but God damn it. Did he change politics for, uh, the left? And I think that, I think that the way that he did that was showing people that the grassroots model of um is is possible and i think that it, it, it's viable and even though it's you know goddamn hard and we have a lot of work to do to you know even the table like it can be done and once you get in like yeah. good luck getting them out